OK, so um, the problem I'm going to do, I'll do the first problem, and then I'll do one of these problems. Yeah, last one's easy. I'll at least prepare you for the last one. I'm not going to do it, though. Um, but I'll show you. I'll, give you. I'll teach you a point that I guarantee you can do it. So anyways, in this example here, um, basically, again, we're just going to, it's just applying, just pretend the inequality is like an equation. You're just going to go ahead and go through solving. So you see my variable x is being multiplied by negative 13, and it's being added by 5, because that's a positive 5. So we're just going to apply our inverse operations. So I'll subtract a 5 on both sides. That leaves me with negative 13x is greater than a negative 26. Now my x is being multiplied by negative 13. So to undo multiplying by negative 13, I'll divide by negative 13. But remember my rule, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number to solve, you have to flip the sign. So this is now a flipped sign of positive 2. OK? Be very, very careful with that. It's a very common mistake. I've made this mistake multiple times. Because I get talking really quickly, and I do the problems really quickly, and I totally forget about it. OK? Now, when, now what we need to do is graph our solution. Now, a lot of times students start to say, oh, well, I always start with 0 in the middle. Yeah, 0 works sometimes. All right, but what if this was like 200? You wouldn't want to start at 0 and go to 200. So my recommendation is always start with your solution right in the center. Then values to the right are going to be numbers that are larger. And numbers to the left are going to be numbers that are smaller. Okay, So now we need to graph our solution, because our solution is x is less than 2. So we're going to do a nice big circle at 2. Then we look at our inequality symbol to determine if it is solid or open. Well, since that's a less than symbol, that's an open point. So I'm going to leave that there. You can also always test your solution. Just plug that number in for x. You can always do what we call testing. Is 2 less than 2? No. no. So that's false. So it's not a part of the solution. Does that make sense? OK. Then you can also determine the shading. There's three different ways we can do it. One, you can always like pick a random point on the graph. Let's pick 0. Is 0 less than 2? Yes, that's true. So since it's true to the left of the test point, or to the point, to your solution point, that means all the values are left are true to the left. Just make sure you also include an arrow, guys, because when I say numbers that are less than 2, that goes all the way to negative infinity. So make sure you include a negative arrow there. Um, the other ways, the other couple ways to do this, the way that I like to do it is just say the inequality symbol out loud. X is less than. Well, what numbers are less than two? This way or that way, right? It's kind of obvious in the, uh, when you can say when you can remember what the inequality symbol is. Another easy way that works but also cannot work is looking at the inequality symbol. The inequality symbol is going to show you where to shade only, quote unquote, only when the variable is solved on the left hand side. If this was switched around, like x what, um, 2 is greater than x, this is the same thing. I just flip-flopped them. So make sure if you're going to follow the arrow of the inequality, make sure your variable is on the left-hand side. OK? But that's how you guys do that one. And um, 